Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hey folks, on Ink Dependence today, we are looking at a pen. I've been doing a lot of pen reviews lately, and I really like doing these guys. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'm going to keep that coming. I've got a bunch more on my list. This is a Kaveco pen, obviously. It comes in all this packaging. I've even got the plasticky thing here. This was sent out for review by MassDrop.com. Thank you very much, MassDrop, for sending this out. Uh, do watch the end of the video and check out the description below to uh, see the link for the giveaway for a pen like this. You'll get your very very own if you win. So check that out. Inside this sleeve, which is over there, we have another sleeve. Has all kinds of uh, Kaveco information on there. Really just kind of says uh, where Kaveco is. Anyway, like this, it's over there. This is the tin box that a lot of the Kaveco pins come in uh, at the top end. This is kind of one of their top end or upper end pins anyway. And uh, it's a pretty cool box. It's all, you know, in relief, feels nice. A little bit of a clank there as you hear the pin hitting the inside. Don't worry, you ain't gonna hurt this pin. Uh, I would, <laughs> if I'm gonna use this as a carry box, and I might, because it's a cool box, uh, I'll probably put something in the top of it. Maybe like one of these old jeweler's cloths or something, or uh, uh, one of those ones you use for wiping eyeglasses or something, uh, just to keep it from clanking. But uh, inside this box, you have the pen. This is the Kaveco Special, and this is the brass version. So like I said, you're not gonna hurt it by dinging it against this uh, you know, little aluminum box here. It's not going to hurt it. This thing is pretty bomb-proof. I really like the interior of these Kaveco boxes. If we're talking about this for just a sec, uh, you can put this pin in a variety of different ways. So if you can carry two pins, one in each slot, top and bottom, or they have this little diagonal cut in, so you can just carry one, but right across instead of, you know, just waiting down half it. I don't know. It looks cool, and I dig it. So anyway, good job, Kaveco, on the box. That's a nice box. All right. So this is the pen, and it's a fairly small pen, this Kaveco Special. It has the facets, just like you're used to from Kaveco. Uh, let's see, how many sides here? Uh, eh, three, four, eight sides. Eight sides in this little Kaveco Special. There aren't too many adornments on the outside. I mean, it is kind of a bright and flashy pen because it is solid brass. Like, all the parts of this thing are brass, except for the nib, basically. Well, I guess the converter and the ink, but the rest of it, all brass. You'll see there is a small emblem in the top. This is the Kaveco emblem. Just says Kaveco, broken into thirds, like a little triforce. Pretty sweet. And that's in uh, not brass. It's like an aluminum or something, maybe. I'm not exactly sure what that's made of, but it's a nice little finial. I like the way that the silver sets off the brass. I think it's cool. On the ends, you'll see that it is a screw-threaded pen here at the end. It does screw on to post, and it is a fairly small pen. This is definitely a pocket pen size thing. Also, of course, no clips. So if you are a clip hater, this is a good pen for you. If you are a clip lover, not such a great pen, maybe. Although, I will say that because of those facets, it really doesn't roll. It'll do just a little bit, but it's going to settle down quickly. So just like row trings or something, um, it's it's got a flat, a bunch of flat sides. And so it'll stop rolling pretty quickly. I haven't had any problems with this rolling away. What I do wish is that I could clip it to like the placket of my shirt or something. And you can get aftermarket clips for these guys. I haven't seen one from Kaveco, although they do sell a clip for the sport and those kinds of things. But I haven't seen one for the uh, Kaveco Special. And actually, these are kind of hard to find over here in the U.S. For some reason, they just don't really, none of the retailers here really sell them. I found them at, um, I found the aluminum version which is black and is a very slick looking pen in fact i think i like the aluminum look better than this one maybe um but you can find that at jet pens uh, you'll be able to find this one on uh, mass drop for like the next couple of weeks i'm not really sure how long the drop is going to last uh, look at the description below that'll have the link for you uh, and there's a couple other places you can find it but it's not super easy to find i think bertram's inkwell has some but they don't have them on the website um, I think Farney's pens might sell them. Like, there just aren't very many. And so this is kind of a, a pen that I hadn't seen before until I got it out of this package. So I was psyched about that. Uh, one of the cool things that MassJob does is that they will have pens that are not really available in the U.S. very much. The ones that they have that are available in the U.S., I mean, you can find those wherever. But the ones that aren't, that's pretty cool. I like that. So anyway, check that out. Um, like I said, threaded on the ends, and these threads are a little bit sharp. I find that's true with all my brass pens. Uh, well, I guess I've only got two. The copper ones don't seem to be as sharp, but the brass ones, man, these threads seem to be a little bit sharp. I'm not worried about it catching on anything, but when I was polishing it up earlier with this polishing cloth that I got from Montegrappa, it came with the copper mule, they let me keep the cloth. All of this tarnish came from, like, how long have I had this? A week or so? Maybe a week and a half? So not very long to get all that tarnish off, but actually brass is a little bit tough to to polish 
And uh, I, I was a little bit worried about it catching threads on here, but it didn't seem to do any damage, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, you'll also see, if you look closely here at the center, that there is a black like spacer, and that is an O-ring that is here at the waist of this pen. Unscrew the cap, and you'll see there's the tarnished brass. I didn't bother polishing the grip section because, man, it's just going to get tarnished again. This tarnishes very quickly. I have a, I don't know what it is, my skin chemistry or something, definitely tarnishes pens pretty quickly. Not as quickly as some others I've seen, but pretty quick. So uh, if you're a person that doesn't like the tarnished look, man, maybe not the pen for you unless you coat it in a lacquer or something weird. I don't know. But uh, if, you like, if you don't like tarnish on pens, probably you're not getting raw metal pens anyway. Uh, the section on this is a little bit short. That's one of my very few complaints. Overall, I really like this pen. It's got a great weight. Some of the other brass pens, like uh, like this guy, this is a Brass Keras Customs uh, Fountain K. This is the original one. And it's also got pretty sharp brass threads. Um, and it's super heavy. Like, this thing is, is mega heavy. And if you write with this for very long, it's going to get tiring. I've written... Uh, several pages with this little Kabeco uh, special, and it is not tiring at all. It is kind of a perfect weight. It's a little, I mean, it's heavier than like an aluminum pen or an uh, acrylic pen or something like that, but it's a good weight. It's a good length to use unposted. It's also a good length to use posted. It doesn't screw on, it doesn't take very much to screw it on. It's, uh, let's see, uh, one, two, about two turns will get it on there for you. So that's not too bad uh, if you're screwing it on and off. And then posted, it's actually not that back heavy. It is a little bit back heavy because this is just a solid brass chunk for that cap. But uh, it's not too bad. I think it's uh, I think it's a good weight. I often use it posted, in fact. That's kind of my preferred one. Uh, and I also prefer to hold it a little bit further up the barrel. One, because the section is so short and my hands are big. So if I hold it back on the barrel, it's easier for me to get on the page with the nib. This way, it's a little bit hard. I have to sort of angle in and then my my fingers get on the threads and I don't really care for it. Uh, but another thing that this little uh, o-ring does is it definitely keeps the cap tight against the uh, the metal. Um, and so when you cap this guy, it's not coming off. Like this is not going to come off accidentally. And also, it's not. Uh, it doesn't let the nib dry out. I haven't had any dry outs with this pen. And it, there are a couple of times when I've left it, you know, sitting for a couple of days or something. No problems. No problems at all. Always starts right up. Uh, probably when I do the writing sample, it's going to be a little reticent because I'm waving it around uncapped for so long. But, you know, whatever. You know how that goes for pen reviews. Here's my other quibble, and that's that the body of the pen, the barrel, is actually threaded in the same direction as the cap. And so that means sometimes when you go to un unscrew the cap, you also or you accidentally unscrew the barrel instead. Uh, the fix to that is just to really torque the barrel on. And then it's not going to come uh, come loose as much. You just got to give it a little bit of extra, uh, you know, uh, uh, to get it on there. And then you're fine. This pen is a cartridge or converter pen. So unlike a lot of the other Kaveco pens, this one will take a full-size converter. I have cut the top off of this converter, but that's not for this pen. This was, That was for... Uh, what was it for? I want to say it was like a tactile turn gist or something like that. Those are a little bit short in the inside of the body. Uh, and so it uh, <laughs> it wouldn't take a regular converter. And so I chopped off this a little bit of plastic edging at the top. But uh, this one takes uh, converters, cartridges, no problem. Standard International. So you don't have to worry about finding some uh, proprietary converter or cartridge or something. It's just everything fits in this guy. Uh, I tried several converters and they all worked fine. So this is a pretty nice looking pen and a pretty nice feeling pen. It's got good features. Um, and, uh, well, it's a Kaveco. Here's the other thing about Kavecos. I have heard some people have bad luck with the nibs. Um, I was just talking to another, uh, pen reviewer and they said they, they're actually looking at one like this for another, uh, company. And they said, uh, that their nib writes beautifully. So does mine. In fact, I haven't had any Kaveco nibs that didn't uh, write well, but this Kaveco nib writes really nicely. I've really been enjoying it. And I think it's a fine, let me make sure. Yeah, obviously, this is a fine nib, so, so right there, and it's a really nice nib. I've got no complaints about this nib at all. It writes beautifully. So, let's go to the paper and uh, look at it right nicely, I guess. Hold on just a sec. Okay, so here is a, uh, a better close-up view of this pen. Let's go ahead and unscrew it. Make sure it's going to write for me. Ah, oh, it totally is. Starts off with no problem. So as I said before, I said this is probably going to be a little reticent to write since I'm waving it around. No problems. This is the Kaveco. special in brass. This is a stainless steel nib. And uh, it is it is a really nice smooth stainless steel nib. <laughs> I had to look around my my uh, 
my microphone there. Oh, let me, uh, let me go ahead and post this. It's actually a, a little bit short maybe for, um, for unposted. I don't, it's like right at that, right at that spot where you kind of want to post it, but you don't have to short notes is no problem, but writing for a length of time, I like to post it, even though that makes it kind of long. Um, so, uh, what else can I tell you about this pen? Uh, it is all brass. It is a cartridge converter. Oh, this ink is uh, one that I've really been enjoying and you'll probably get a review of this one soon, but this is Monteverde. Olivine. And it is a beautiful green ink. Just like several shades darker than jade, really, but man, beautiful, beautiful color. This is out of their gemstones line. Say what you like about Monteverde pens. Their inks are real good. So uh, that's the ink. I'll uh, we'll do a little quote. I'm actually not sure where this one's from, and I didn't bother to Google it. Uh, it might just be something my friend Jim said, but here, here it goes. If that's actually a quote from somewhere, I'm sure Jim will tell me where, but also feel free to comment. Uh, don't at me, but you know, do comment on the thing. Let me know where that pineapple is off my pizza is. Keep your pineapples off my pizza. Look, I actually think pineapples are an okay pizza topping. They're not my favorite pizza topping, but uh, it's not going to turn me away. Anchovies, on the other hand, gross. All right. So uh, this has been uh, a brief look at the writing ability of this Kaveco Sport. Let's look at it next to some other pins to get sort of an idea of how... Um, how, how big this guy is. Hold on just a sec, let me switch camera again. Okay, so this is basically the same setup I used for the Kaveco um, Perkyo because, well, it looks in the, like it's in the same kind of size category as these, and this will give you an idea of what these pins look like. Um, or at least uh, size-wise, because you have probably at least one of these. Um, this is the Pilot Plumix, the Weirdo Squid pen. This is the Platinum Plaisir, which is the bigger and a more aluminum aluminum-y version of the uh, the, uh, the Preppy. This is, of course, the Kaveco we've been looking at the whole time. This is your Pilot Metropolitan, the MR. Uh, this is the Pilot Kakuno. This is a little Esterbrook J transitional toaster top. I love the toaster tops. I think that's fun. I don't use this pen much, but I really like it. A uh, little Kaveco Sport for pocket pen action and the Pilot Petite One. So these are, it must be said, not in the same price category as the Kaveco uh, Special. That Kaveco Special is in a whole other category than any of these pens. In fact, uh, one, two, three, four... It's the price of most of these put together, honestly. And you know, it is machined metal pen. It is. It does have facets. I think the facets must be what jacks the price up. Uh, the price on this guy is 130 bucks, misrip. Uh, if you can find it in the U.S. And there are, like I said, there are like two places I know of that sell it, aside from this mass drop deal that's going on soon. Uh, so we'll look at like price competitors here in just a sec. But uh, as far as size, this is a good size for a pocket pen. It's the same size as the uh, the Plaisir, which is a really nice size. Uh, the Plaisir is a little bit wider, is the only thing. It's about the same size as the Metropolitan. So if you know the Metropolitan size, you know the Kaveco size. Um, it is skinnier, however than the Metropolitan. The Metropolitan gets a little bit fat. This guy is kind of skinny. The grip diameter on the Kaveco is about eight millimeters, which is kind of small. I usually like it around 10, but for a pocket pen, that's totally reasonable. And also the barrel diameter is right around 10. So uh, as you, if you hold it at the barrel more or less where I do, it's not gonna be a problem for your, your traditional like, um, you know, size of pen. And also the facets are kind of nice to hold on to. I don't think with eight facets on there, I don't think anybody's going to find it uncomfortable to hold, even though it does have flat sides. I think you'll be fine. Let's look at some price competitors right quick. Okay, so here are some competitors in terms of price. I mean, also about size, but these are a little bit less common in terms of uh, pens that people have. So uh, this is an odd price range because at 130 bucks, Miserip, it's kind of in between like the the upper entry level pens at like 70 or 80 or 100 bucks, and it's also kind of below sort of the like. 
it's it's not 150 bucks and some of these are around that area but it's not as much as like the 200 dollars. 130 is an odd area so it might be kind of your sweet spot if you're like ah, i can't feel i can't I, sometimes we have price breaks you know like under 100 bucks i'm like yeah okay i'll probably get that and i won't think too much about it but you know at this point in my pen journey but uh like at 150 i start going i don't know man um at 160 i'm like yeah better be pretty good uh, and at 200 i really have to give it some serious thought but those are just my breaks yours are going to be different so uh here we have some extra some other pens this is the other brass pen i have i don't have any other brass pens this is as i mentioned before the Keras customs uh, fountain k and this thing is an absolute tank of a pen it is easily twice as heavy as this uh, Kaveco. it's just thicker it's more brass uh but you can get these for i think like 120 ish in all brass i think that's about right although they don't sell the version one anymore so it's a little bit different and so that's pretty close, which means that this is maybe not outlandishly priced for a brass machined pen because that's pretty close too. Uh, you also have the venerable uh, Lamy 2000, and you can get these between 100 and 150 bucks. 120 bucks is pretty common, uh, but full price on these is like 160, I think, something like that. Uh, so you know that's this one ranges wildly. Uh, this is the Tassia Pinnacle, which I haven't gotten to review yet, and I should do soon. And this one ranges between like 100 and 130 bucks. So it's right around in the same area. Uh, and this is a much lighter pen. This is also machined metal. It is aluminum, but it's got a plastic section, has sailor nibs. So, you know, it's and it's got a whole different look. Like, it's got the clip, and it's got this ribbed barrel. It's a really interesting looking pen. That's in the same price range. I'm pretty sure this Faber-Castell Ambition in Pearwood is in the same price range-ish, at least commonly. This one's a little bit higher. These, uh, This is the uh, Sailor 1911 standard size. This is a little bit more money, but you do get a gold nib on this one, and uh, it is a Sailor, so it's got that going for it. Uh, but it is plastic. It's a whole different kind of pen, different carry proposition from this guy. And then lastly, this is the Franklin Christoph Model 2, uh, sorry, 20, which is one of my very favorite pens. I've got a couple of these, and uh, man, I really like them. I've got two, I guess, I don't know how many Audrey has, at least at least one, maybe two, but we really like the 20. It's a great pen. Uh, and at 165 ish it's in the same kind of price range. Um, there is one pen that I haven't been able to show you because I don't have one, although I do like it. Um, and that is the Kaveco uh, Lily Putt Supra, or maybe they just call it the Supra. I, I really can't keep it straight, but um, it's like a big fat Lilliput, or kind of like a weirdo sport. It's a little bigger than this one, but it's convertible. And definitely do yourself a favor and look up the Kaveco Super, or Supra, S U P R A. And that comes in at 140 bucks, Misrip. So that's uh, like 10 bucks more than this one, but it's. M far more pen it's more it's heavier it's got like a section that you can unscrew so you can have a pocket pen a short one or you can have a longer pen like full-sized gives you a lot of options and it's kind of a cool pen but this one is definitely smaller it is thinner um, but it's got a great way it's got so much good stuff going for it so it's really going to depend on what you're looking for in a pen whether you think this is a good proposition for you or not all right, so this has been Ink Dependence. I'm Mike. These are a bunch of pens. This is the Kaveco Special in Brass. Go check it out at that mass drop link. Go and enter to win one. Uh, tell them I said hi. Tell your friends to enter. I mean, unless you don't want your friends to win. That's cool, too. I understand. I get it. Uh, and uh, I will see y'all in the next video. Uh, peace out. Hey folks, is this video helpful to you? Did you learn something? Did you find a pen you want or maybe a pen you don't want? Well, hey, click that subscribe link to get more of these things and become a patron if you're feeling extra special cool. See y'all later. Peace out again.